Right, this is a really short video on why referendum on equal marriage or abortion rights is neither wanted nor needed in Northern Ireland. Okay, the only reason that same-sex marriage and abortion reform had to be put to a referendum in the Republic of Ireland is because the Irish Constitution mandates that if any issue that is in the Constitution or any article of the Constitution is to be changed, it can only be done so, it can only happen by way of a public referendum. Now, both same-sex marriage was banned in the Constitution because it mandated that marriage was only between one man and one woman, and the Eighth Amendment that was put into the Irish Constitution in 1983 banned more or less abortion in every single form, um, in all circumstances. Now, those two things have been removed from the Constitution, or will soon be removed um, in, t in regards to the Eighth Amendment because of the referendum that happened a couple of days ago. <sighs> I don't know how many times we as campaigners on these issues need to tell people that, number one, if you're going to speak on our behalf, don't. We can do it for ourselves. Number two, we've been doing this for a long time. We know what way these things need to happen. Number three, there is no constitutional arrangement by which a referendum can be called in Northern Ireland or anywhere in the UK without private or with, with, without enacting legislation being tabled in Westminster. And even then, because we don't have a constitution in the UK or in Northern Ireland, referenda are not legally binding. The Brexit referendum was not legally binding. It was a glorified advisory opinion poll that the government can then choose to enable or not. The only thing, like for instance, in the Republic of Ireland, articles of the constitution, if they're removed or enabled or repealed, whatever, by way of referendum, they're enshrined in the constitution and then only another referendum can remove them. If there is an abortion referendum in Northern Ireland or an equal marriage referendum in Northern Ireland and the government decides to enable the result and the result is a victory, that's brilliant. But all it takes is for another government to undo that legislation and all that work and all that time and effort and money that the, that those campaigns do not have that is poured into those referendum referenda are gone. It's gone. It's all wasted. It's all a waste of time. Also, if there is a referendum on these two issues, it gives credence to the idea that you can put civil rights for LGBT people and women up to a public vote and then we have to beg for our civil rights by going door to door and asking for them. The only reason that people had to do that in the South is because, again, the Constitution demanded it. There was no way around it. If there was a way around it, they would have done it that way. There wouldn't have been a need for a referendum on those two issues. Referendums are grueling. They are bruising. They are brutal. And quite frankly, in the UK, they're a waste of time. There is, I'm just, I just, I just need commentators and journalists to stop. Commentators and journalists that aren't involved in the, these campaigns to stop speaking on the behalf of the campaigns in question. If you want to know if we want a referendum, ask us. Ask Alliance for Choice. Ask Love Equality. Ask any of the organisations that are involved in those coalitions. I'm just a private member of these campaigns. I don't speak on their behalf, but I know that they don't want a referendum on either of these issues. Because we don't need one. Westminster can legislate for these issues tomorrow if it wanted to. There doesn't need to be a referendum. It can be done in a matter of weeks. It doesn't have to be months and months of campaigning and canvassing and people having to knock doors to ask for their basic civil rights. So the next time you feel like throwing out a hot take and writing an article on why there needs to be a referendum on equal marriage or abortion reform in Northern Ireland and you're not from Northern Ireland or you're not involved in these campaigns, do us all a favour and don't. Just pick up the phone, 
send an email, send a tweet, a direct message to the campaigns in question asking what is the best way for you to support them. Okay? It's really not asking much. I know I'm coming across really irate here, but I'm ju I've am just had it. I'm just so tired of having to have the same conversation as to why people going door to door asking for their civil rights is not a great idea. And it's usually not people that are affected by these issues that are asking for a referendum. It's usually, like for instance, I've seen a lot of men asking for a referendum on abortion reform in Northern Ireland. I've seen a lot of non-LGBT commentators saying there should be a referendum on equal marriage in Northern Ireland. Do you really think that us as queer people or women who have gone through crisis pregnancies really want to have to stand in the street and tell people all about their personal stories in order to make them change their mind and put an X on a ballot paper when it comes to polling day? No, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is write to our MP and ask them to make the change happen. Now that doesn't always work, but it's better than having a referendum that will just exhaust and drain the resources of an already stretched and squeezed like third sector sorry i couldn't think of the term there um because that's who'll be running these campaigns it's not the people that's asking for them they'll not be giving us all their money to run these things we'll have to dig deep into resources that are already scarce and find within ourselves the energy to fight these campaigns don't put that pressure on us. We don't want it and we don't need it. Okay? So, please just listen to us because we know what we're talking about. Alright? Thank you.